Hi, my name is Michael Grinder. I have for some time been an expert, so-called, in the area of nonverbal communication. The most controversial area that I've come upon is inhale and exhale and breathing. And I finally came across someone that can explain neuroscience-wise what we're saying and why it works. If you would, please join me in welcoming Sarah Payton here. Thank you, Michael. Do it. Teach her. Teach okay. Teach her. Thank you very much. Today I'm going to talk to you about the polyvagal theory. And after we finish getting a little bit of a sense of this enormous nerve channel that runs down between our spinal column and our heart, then we will understand what Michael's asking for when he's asking us to belly breathe. And we will understand how it is even more important than he has told us. So with that in mind, we'll begin. I've written up here for you polyvagal theory and Stephen Porges' name. He is the neuroscientist that developed this polyvagal theory. Now, it sounds like it's speculative because it's the word theory, but it's like the theory of evolution. It is proven fact with all kinds of new things being developed. In fact, I did this talk last year, and I've developed it since then based on the latest research. So there's an enormous nerve channel that runs down in front of your spinal column and behind your heart. So it's written here in, in uh, brown color here. And it goes here from the brain stem, and it comes down, and it comes to the guts. So this nerve channel is the part of our body that sends the signal that it's OK to digest food. When we are relaxed, then this signal is going, yes, digest food. But when we're hopeless or overwhelmed, so this would be the situation where a public speaker gets so overwhelmed before a presentation that they actually freeze. In this situation, the person's body energy falls. The energy traveling in the vagus nerve goes at only two meters a second. It goes really slowly. And when this happens, our heart rate falls. Our digestion actually kind of stops. Because what's happening here is the system is under stress. So we're going to cover this one up right here. Under stress, things move really slow. And there can be shock, freeze, dissociation. This is the kind of situation that will happen when somebody has trauma that's connected with public speaking. So you may ask, what do I do if I've gone into freeze? Well, the answer is you belly breathe. You might not be able to belly breathe right away. There may be the need to acknowledge that your system has gone into fight or flight. Once you acknowledge that you're in fight or flight, then you get to experience the roller coaster of being alive. You get to experience the adrenaline and cortisol rush that takes over when a public speaker goes, oh my god, I am really scared now. In this situation, you can see that things move fast. All of a sudden, our system pops out of the freeze into the kind of the <sighs> excitement and terror. And in that situation, then we move from just two meters per second to 120 meters a second. There is absolute movement into the roller coaster of being human. In this situation, you have shallow breathing, breathing up above the diaphragm. When Michael tells us to put our hands on our chest and feel where the breath is, we are, and we're moving here, you're identifying that your system is at least partially in fight or flight. The heart rate increases. What's going to happen when the system gets turned on like this? The heart rate goes up. It can go up 30 to 40 beats a minute. It can go in that coming out of the freeze into the, oh, it moves. It can go up 
from 60 beats a minute to 90, even 120 beats a minute if somebody is really excited. There's no digestion that happens in this time. And this can also be called the sympathetic activation. This is the activation of the HPA axis, of the hypothalamic pituitary axis, which makes cortisol and adrenaline flow through our veins like blood. So the system is running on stress in this situation. When you're breathing high, the system is running on stress. Now, what happens if you actually remember what Michael recommended? Your system changes again. This time, it moves into ventral vagal. And we start to see something incredibly beautiful happen in the human body. When we breathe down into our belly, and we'll speak a little bit more about that in a moment. The human body starts to believe that we are safe. When we believe that we are safe, the fine muscles of the face come alive. This means that when a speaker is in relationship with an audience, their face moves with micro-movements in response to every face that you make eye contact with. You become a responsive agent of transformation and connection when you begin to belly breathe and when your face and your body come alive. It is almost a miracle that when the face comes alive and there's belly breathing, Ears tighten to the sound range of the human voice. The eyes automatically, in concert with the ears, come and focus on the human face. When we make eye contact, we automatically alert the brain that this is a person about whom we care. We begin to turn on the empathy circuits when we make eye contact. We start to see what's happening with other people and be in response to it. So the work that's been done here in Perception Camp this week has been about inviting your system into a place where you can really see others. And when you are belly breathing, you are maximizing the miracle of human responsiveness. The heart rate descends a little bit from, from stress, but remains alive. We have heart rate variability. Our heart is instead of beating boom, 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 boom regularly, it's beating boom, 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 boom. Our heart rate dances with our, with our Excitement about being present and our pauses where we receive what's happening. And our body is digesting happily. Now this picture, oh, and here's the cool thing. The system runs on oxygen when we're in ventral vagal, coming back to breathing. So when there's, a, when there's an inhale, there's a slight increase of heart rate. And when we exhale, especially when we exhale slowly, a little bit more slowly than we're inhaling, the pressure that our breathing column creates presses on a node of the heart that makes the heart rate go into heart rate variability. So the, this, these are the complex kind of symphony of safety signals that a speaker begins to integrate as they breathe deeply. And the message that they send to the people that they're in the space with is that they are also safe. When the speaker moves into a place of safety, the audience is invited into a place of safety. When the speaker breathes deeply, the audience can breathe deeply. When the audience can breathe deeply, 
and be in ventral vagal, then what happens is that their brains and their systems start to work with more ease. This is power sharing. This is an invitation to people to be in a place of discovery and learning. So the breathing that you do allows the people that you are reaching to come with you and to go farther than you. When a room is connected with a speaker, the brains of the people listening actually complete the sentences of the speaker before the speaker finishes their sentences. People working together with a speaker who is in a place of safety create a group brain which is able to do far more than a single brain is able to do on its own. Thank you.